Now we're going to look at the axial deformation of a truncated cone with radius R1 at the fixed end and radius R2 at the free end where the load is being applied. Similar to the previous case, we are going to express the cross-sectional area as a function of x, right? So it's going to be pi times radius squared, and the radius is a function of x as r1 minus r1 minus r2 divided by L times x. The variation in radius is linear. However, that doesn't mean that the variation in area is linear, right? because the area is pi r squared. So if we write the variation in radius as b plus ax, where this term is b and this term is a, then the area as a function of x is simply pi times b plus ax squared. Okay. As we have discussed in a previous video, this problem can be seen as an infinite number of axial rods of differential length subject to the same load. So these are basically axial rods in series again. We know that when rods are in series, the deformation of each rod adds to the total deformation. So the total deformation at the top is going to be the sum of P dx divided by AE. A, in this case, is a function of x, which is equal to pi times B plus AX squared. So the key here is to solve this integral after figuring out that the area varies in this fashion. Now this integral has an exact solution which is equal to e over pi e. Those come out of the integral because they are constant and then we are left with this integral here, 0 to L, dx, ax plus b squared. The solution of that is minus times 1 over a ax plus b. The minus sign comes from the solution of this integral and that has to be evaluated between 0 and L. Now remember that A is minus R1 minus R2 divided by L and B is R1. So we need to substitute those in here and we obtain the following, minus p pi over e times you can see here that basically we're going to find 1 over a times a l plus b minus 1 over a times b. After substituting L for X and 0 for X, we get that. If you work out the A's and the B's and put them in here, and do a little bit of algebra, which is really not that hard, but basically you just have to uh, substitute and work out the sum of the fractions, you're going to find this expression, P, L, times pi, E, R1, times R2. 
Again, this is by substituting A and B for the corresponding values. That expression can be further simplified by multiplying by R1 and dividing by R1 in the denominator. What you get is PL over E pi R1 squared right, times R1 over R2, which is a ratio of the radius at the base divided by the radius at the tip. And so this expression here, it's basically the deformation you would have if you had the radius at the bottom continue constantly, right? All the way up. But because you don't have that area, that deformation needs to be amplified and the ratio, that coefficient, that amplifies that deformation is R1 divided by R2, which in this case is a number larger than 1, as it should be, because you are making the area smaller as you go up, so the deformation will increase. This is a kind of a correction coefficient in relation to the deformation you would have with a prismatic bar of radius R1. So um, our result, in summary, is PL over E pi R1 squared times alpha, where alpha is R1 divided by R2. Now I do suggest that you go through this algebra here on your own and substitute A for this and B for that and don't forget the minus sign that go into the A uh, and, and actually try to reach this expression for yourself so that you can convince yourself that it actually boils down to that. Again, as we have done in previous problems, we have neglected the self-weight of the rod. That is, we haven't included that effect. We are going to do a few examples in future videos where we compute the deformation due to self-weight, and those problems um, will be solved in a similar fashion using this integral, but now P is also a function of x because the load changes as you move along the rod.